I built a two node Kubernetes cluster inside this backpack. It has one petabyte of compute and I call it my petaflop cluster because it's in a cat carrier, right? It's just an expensive pun. Let me walk you through how the whole thing works and then I wanna show you what's inside. By the time you're watching this video, the application is gonna be down because this isn't gonna be assembled anymore, but I carried this around KubeCon. I would walk around the vendor hall, which is also why my voice sounds like this, because I got stopped pretty much every 10 to 15 feet of someone saying, hey, what's that? And so I would tell them that on one side, we have a QR code that you can scan that gives you access to the local AI application that's running on this backpack. The application is just a small front end that gives you gives camera access and lets you take a picture. And then when you say stylize that photo, it uploads it through the tethered network onto the front end and then into the DGX Spark. The Spark then does a comfy UI workflow that has an AI model running locally. The prompt for that is basically just turn this person into a cartoon character, and then it processes a six, a six step workflow and then sends the image back to the front end, and the person can decide if they want to share the photo, throw it away, do whatever they want. It all stayed local on this cluster. It was super fun and I got a lot of reactions across the board. Everyone was really interested in what's inside, how it works, and what's put together. The entire thing weighs about 25 pounds, most of that being the battery, and it lasts about three hours on a battery charge, which was pretty great. Whenever I wasn't walking around the venue, I would just bring it back to the Sidera Labs booth, plug it in so we could get power to the battery to restart recharging it, and plug in the spark so that it didn't draw directly from the battery. The front panel of lights on the top here is completely not connected to the cluster. That's just a small LED a uh, thing I bought on Amazon, it has a phone app that you can control it with whatever words you want, animations and stuff like that. It was really just a way to attract some people to see what's going on. And on both sides of the bag, I have a fan system that just sucks in air from the outside. The idea was just to get it to pull in as much fresh air as possible. A lot of people asked about this card, thinking, oh, that's a GPU you have hanging on the side? And actually, no, it's just a fan kit that has some blue lights on it. Uh, it's something I had in my drawer that I thought, oh, I could just shove that in this little side pocket which has an opening vent on the side because again, this is meant to carry a cat or some small animal, so it has a lot of venting in it. And so I try to use that as much as possible, suck in fresh air from the bottom, blow it out the top, either by opening the zipper on the top and leaving that available or just using the vents over here. And then I also wired some things on the outside like this light, uh, like this controller for the front LEDs, I could switch what's going on or I could hold it to turn it off if I didn't want to be distracting if I was in like a talk or something like that. So now let's open it up and I'll show you all the pieces inside. Most of the kit just pops right out. The only things I have to disconnect are the front LED panel and the USB that goes to both of the fans. Each fan has their own USB plug. On the side of the set, I also left the charger for the battery pack just plugged into the front. So it made it really easy just to get this out. Whenever I was next to an outlet, I could go plug it in. And I did that at a couple of different parties and just places that the battery was low that I knew I wanted to show it off and I could still get a little trickle charge to the battery. I use a whole lot of Velcro ties just to make sure things didn't shift around too much because it definitely, as I was wearing the backpack, things started to fall forward a little bit. So it kept some of the cables a little bit tidier on the inside and just generally kept them in place. So let's start on the top, which is just the DGX Spark. And that was the piece that was obviously doing all the AI workloads. I put it on the top so you could see it as well as possible inside the bag and also to give it as much airflow as possible. The back is really just the power and the network and the battery pack has is the smallest battery I could find with a 110 outlets that would do 240 watts. And so this little battery, once I get down there, I'll show it to you. The frame I just found, I 3D printed it. It held up okay. I did just standard PLA, so it's not very strong. And with all the heat and weights, I'm surprised it held up as well as it did. Uh, I did have an extra frame on the top just in case something happens. And I tried to print a, like a diagonal, like so a diagonal structure on the back just so that things wouldn't fall out the back, but then also give a little bit of support in the middle here. But the whole thing's not glued together or anything. I just basically set it together and then use Velcro to kind of attach it as much as possible or attach things to it as I was going. So let's go ahead and take some of these other pieces out. I 3D printed a little uh, arm for the screen so it sits on front and then I kind of Velcroed it in place where I wanted it. 
and then I bolted it to the frame on top. I just drilled some holes through it before I left to make sure that that would attach okay. Uh, I didn't, I went overkill on the bolts, but it's just sits in there. Uh, it powers over USB-C, which was actually great because I ran this power directly from the, uh, from the Latte Panda. And that let me know if the Latte Panda was on or not, because it was kind of hard to see it under the whole stack. And so if it was getting power to the monitor, I knew the Latte Panda was still powered. I did a GL iNets. I don't remember what model this is. Uh, the AC1300 uh, for the networking internal to the cluster. So all I needed was the two nodes. So I just needed two network ports that gave me uh, DHCP to both nodes. I set up static IP addresses just to make sure I can route to them. This one supports tail scale, so I could get to it from, whenever it was online, I could get to it from any device in my tail nets to be able to manage things just in case. I didn't really want to have to plug into it. I did occasionally have to plug into the network port and access it because it wasn't online for whatever reason. And I found that instead of doing the Wi-Fi hotspot for my phone, using the phone tether over USB was a lot more reliable. So that was one change that I did after the first day that it kept disconnecting whenever my phone wasn't really, Wi-Fi wasn't working well. Uh, and so just keeping it plugged in, kept my phone charged and also kept the device tethered. The Latte Panda was my control plane. It ran the Nginx uh, Ingress controller and it ran the front, the front end for the application. And it worked absolutely wonderfully just because not only is it small and quiet here, I do have the active cooler on it and I have the NVMe expansion card. So I was able to put the container images over here, make sure it was a little bit faster and I wasn't worried about running out of space on the device. But the real killer was it had the UPS for it. So it had its own battery pack in addition to this. So once the battery pack died, this still stayed alive. So even if I was walking around, the screen would still be lit because that's what was plugged into here. And I could still actually talk to the Kubernetes control plane and see what was going on with at least the front end application and Nginx if I needed to. Uh, so this would stay up. If the battery was completely dead, the switch uh, in here would die. So I didn't actually usually get internet access, but just having this to be on was, was wonderful. It's still, it's still on right now, uh, even while I'm just holding it and the power button was situated just enough that I could reach in through the cage basically, turn on the battery, hit the Latte Panda, and then the whole cluster would come up and run. And then same thing with the DGX Spark, I had to hit the power here for the AC outlets that would turn on this, and I would just power on the back of the DGX Spark. So that was kind of the cycle of turn on both outlets, turn on both computers, and we're ready to go. This is a Taki portable battery station. It's 60,000 milliamp hours. It worked right. I measured it beforehand just to make sure it would kind of fit in here, but I didn't know for sure that it would fit until I got here. Uh, and then having just like an easy shelf on top, it'd be nice if it had a, like a percentage display for battery strength and everything, whatever was left in it. I was just going by these four bars and it did take a long time to charge. It would take up to like three or four hours to fully charge if it was drained. But in most cases, I could charge it throughout the middle of the day at the booth and then charge it again at night and I'd get basically a walk around KubeCon in the morning, a walk around in the afternoon, talk to a bunch of people, just have them have fun. And that was really the idea of the whole thing. Let's just have some fun with this, do some absolutely ridiculous stuff that doesn't make sense, and then show it off. So if you want a full list of the builds, I have a blog on my blog post, justingarrison.com. You can find it there, it'll be in the show notes. I also had a live stream of when I built the whole cluster. At the time, I really wasn't sure how well it was gonna work out. Uh, so I did that live stream as I was building it in my hotel, and now we just tore it apart. So it's time to pack it up and fly home. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.